Hello YouTube viewers. Well today I'll be looking at a Dyson vacuum cleaner, a Dyson upright vacuum cleaner. This is the Dyson DC25 multi-floor, also known as the ball cleaner because it has a ball. And we're going to have a ball making this video I'm sure because I'm going to be throwing so much dirt on my carpet and floors and all over the place to test this little machine out just to see if it's as good as James Dyson claims. I'll also, in a future video, be putting the Dyson DC25 up against some vacuum cleaners costing half or even a third as much and we'll see how they compare performance wise. Now Dyson have introduced some new ball cleaners, um, the DC14, DC41 um, and also some ball cylinder cleaners. For some reason, this was discontinued as far as I knew, the DC25, but it has been relaunched by Dyson because certainly in the UK it can be found showing as a new model um, on a number of online stores. Because the store I, the online retailer I purchased this from, Very, did have the DC25 in quite a while back and then it suddenly reappeared saying it was new. So Dyson have relaunched this probably as an entry level, it's cheaper than their latest ball cleaners and it's proven technology, it um, was awarded a witch best by this machine and uh, it does perform very well, or so I hear, we'll be testing that of course. So like the other Dyson ball models, the motor is inside this tough polypropylene ball and the whole machine moves on the ball. This is supposed to make it easier to manoeuvre around furniture. In practice, I don't find it much different to using a ball cleaner or a normal upright. But anyway, if you like the ball, it's here. It's of course got root cyclone technology. Dyson have improved their cyclones now, which uh, I believe is called radial cyclone technology. Has a clear bin, although this machine has only been used a couple of times, really, two or three times, but the bin has already become opaque. That happens with Dyson cleaners, most bagless cleaners, because of this spinning action of the dirt, especially if you've got any grit particles, they will soon scratch the inside of this and it becomes less clear with use. This will become opaque in a matter of seconds if you use shake and vac or any of those carpet freshening powders, which I suggest you don't use they are bad news for your vacuum cleaners because the particles are quite gritty, especially in shake and vac, they will just scratch this, they don't do the insides of your vacuum any good and unless your vacuum cleaner is fantastic, a residue of the powder is always left in the carpet so if you've got children crawling on the carpet or pets, I wouldn't touch them with a barge pole really because it's bad news, as I say, for your vacuum cleaners there are other powders you can use. SIBO do a powder for cleaning, their Duo P powder. That's fine because the particles aren't gritty. It's a very soft, powdery substance. I've used that many times and found that doesn't harm the cleaners I've used it with. So, enough of me talking. I'll take you on a guided tour of the DC25 and then we'll do the usual tests for performance on carpets and hard floors. Okie dokie, well here we have the Dyson DC25 multi-floor bagless cyclonic upright vacuum cleaner. So I'll just take you through the main features of the cleaner and then we'll give it a performance test. Starting with the bottom, we've got the motorised brush roll with its own independently controlled separate motor. This means that you can have the brush roll stationary when you're cleaning hard floors and we'll be doing a hard floor cleaning test very shortly. It actually pivots, it swivels, let's move the machine back for you, and it moves from side to side. It'll move even better when it's actually in the operating position, which I'll show you. To get it into the operating position, we've got a large red foot operated pedal. You just press that with your foot and recline. So now the machine is resting on the ball. The other two wheels at the back, they're just for stability. And you'll notice when you put the machine in the upright position, these wheels engage and keep the machine secure. That's uh, obviously especially useful when you're using the hose 
and of course when it's in storage you don't want it falling about all over the place so that keeps it securely in the upright position. So here we have the ball so it enables you to manoeuvre the machine which Dyson claim it's slightly easier to manoeuvre than a machine with fixed wheels. You just got a glimpse there that's the dirt ready to be tested on the Dyson but we'll be doing the floor first. So there's the, the ball. The ball houses the motor. It also houses the final filter which is accessed pressing this button here. There we go, just press it and then release if I can. It's a bit tricky when you've I only got one hand to do it with. I managed it on the DC24, which is the the baby brother or sister. I'm not sure what sex a vacuum cleaner is, I suppose. Depends really. Maybe the cylinder, because it's got a long hose, is a male. I'm not sure. If an inanimate object has a gender, who knows? Anyway, this does come off. There we are, done it. So now we have access to the washable post motor filter. Post just means obviously it's the last filter after the motor. So this is where all the exhaust air comes out of. Press the red button, got a little bit you can lift off and then here we have a filter which can be rinsed under water, give it a really good shake, leave it to dry but not over direct heat, not over a radiator, leave it to dry naturally and about 24 hours later should be dry enough and you can put it back in the machine. That needs doing from time to time. I think probably every six months will be sufficient for that filter. And then it just pops back in like this. I can do it. There we go. So now the ball rotates freely. Let's pop the machine back in the upright position. Next thing in, we have the bin here with the maximum fill line. As I said earlier, the bin, despite the fact this is very hardly been used, it's probably been on about an hour tops since I got it in June. Um, it's already become quite opaque, the bin. It won't, won't be as shiny as it was, but that is due, as I said, due to the force of the particles spinning round. They do scratch the inside of the bin. It would be nice if Dyson could produce a plastic. I mean, this is supposed to be made out of riot shield material. Well, they could try making it out of scratch resistant material. To remove the bin, all you do is press this button here and the whole bin releases. And one good thing about Dyson's, I must say, the, the bag emptying, the bin emptying, is a little bit more hygienic than some because you have a button at the top a lot of cleaners have a button near the bottom, so you're putting your hand near the bottom where all the dirt is going to fly out. With this, you can hold it over your bin at arm's length, press the button here on the top, and the flap falls down like that, and you can shake it into the bin. And then if you don't even want to touch it, you can just go like that, and then put it back on your machine. It's unavoidable though, I find you often will get dust on the outside of this container. So while you're outside, if you have allergies, wipe it with a damp cloth and dry it if you don't want to bring any dirt back into your home. The other filter we have is located here on the top of the cyclone unit. And Dyson say here, wash every three months. And it's filter A. To remove the filter, you just pivot the top and you've got this foam filter. As I say, this has been used, so there is some dirt in that. I've not washed this once yet, but that, again, just wash it in water, preferably cold, I think Dyson say, but I tend to wash it within warm with a little bit of mild detergent. Squeeze it out as much as you can, give it a shake, and leave it to dry naturally. Underneath, we've got the cyclones, which can't be cleaned, really. It does not, you can actually dissemble this to clean because after a while the cyclones do become clogged with dirt 
and uh, it can be a bit tricky and it can start making it smell, especially if you've got pets, if you can't get the cyclones cleaned. You can clean the shroud here, which is inside the bin. I'll show you how to get that out. Let's open the bin first. Then there's a little silver catch there. So now we've got access to the shroud. That shroud might get hairs on it or other debris. That can just be brushed off or wiped with a damp cloth. But it's inside here, I don't know if you can see there. That, despite the fact this is not been used very much, you can see all that crud that is already built up in there. And if I'm to tap this on the carpet, which don't do if you've got allergies. Now it proves that the Dyson is picking this up. This is very fine dust, very fine powdery dust. But that, you need to really give this a good whack outside to dislodge the dirt. Some of it's come off there. You can, well some people have used um, a blower thing to get rid of this, but obviously you need to do that outside and if you've got allergies forget about it. It is possible to dismantle the whole unit and wash it, but it's not for a novice. You've got to make sure you know which way it goes in. Would be nice if Dyson could produce a cyclone unit that the user can take apart easily, wash and reassemble. I really don't know why they haven't done that yet. Because that is one bugbear about Dyson cleaners and some other cyclonic cleaners. The cyclones do get caked in muck. Let's just put this back on. So that's the bin and the bin just fits onto the bottom here and just make sure you just press until it clicks in place. The bin has a carry handle here that also forms the carry handle for the whole machine so you can lift the cleaner quite easily as you're going upstairs. The top here we've got two buttons one controls the main suction motor this one controls the brush bar motor so when you switch on you can either have the brush bar running or the brush bar stationary depending on what you're cleaning. Also when the machine's in the upright position the brush bar automatically stops rotating so when you're using the cleaning tools the brush bar is stationary, that's a good safety feature. It also means that the brush roll isn't brushing on one part of the carpet all the time because if you leave an upright cleaner stationary on a carpet with a rotating brush while you're using the tools it could damage the carpet if it's left on you know, for a prolonged period, which is why this machine does have a cut-off. Most cleaners that have got two motors will cut off power to the brush when the machine's in the upright position. We have two onboard tools, or three if you include the two-in-one tool here. First of all, I'll just take the, the cable off. The cable stores on two hooks. You've got top hook here and there's a bottom hook. There's also a little clip here to secure the cable once it's wound round so you don't uh, find it unravelling when you're carrying it. So you can just remove that. To remove the whole cable, again, pretty standard on most vacuum cleaners, certainly most upright cleaners. Turn the hook down and you can release the whole cable in one fell swoop. And I'll turn it back up again. So now we can look at the cleaning tools that are standard with this machine. They do an animal version which also has um, a rotating Dyson turbine brush for pet air removal. Of course this, this can be bought as an option for this machine if you want. But if you don't really have pets then you could probably go for the multi-floor model and save a few pounds. This is your general sort of stair and upholstery tool. It's quite a nice design. You've got lint pickers front and back to remove any pet hairs or threads and fibres and that fits securely into here. It all fits in with a nice click action so that ain't going nowhere. Once that's clicked in place that shouldn't fall off. And then here we have your little multi-tool. So this way it's a crevice tool for getting down the side of your chairs and uh, in inaccessible places like in your car and for Dusting jobs like your blinds, skirting boards, pelmets, you just move this brush up and then you have this quite soft brush for doing your lightweight dusting jobs around the home. 
and then that just clips back there we are, out of the way and just clicks firmly into place. Now to get access to the hose, which is here at the back, there's also a little arrow here that tells you really what you've got to do. There's a cap here, so you just pull the cap up and then you pull this red part upwards and then give it another tug and then it comes away from the machine. And now you've got your cleaning hose which will extend to reach up the stairs. We'll see how far it will go up the stairs because that's, to me, an upright that cleans the stairs with the machine at the bottom is quite an important factor in making my choice. I'd like to know that the hose is long enough. So of course you've got your end here, so you can connect, let's say you can connect your crevice tool and if you put the brush up, now you can use it, say, with the extension. If you've got any cobwebs in the corners, you can actually reach up and clean those. You can also, which is more convenient for when using the machine in a confined space like the car, you can connect the tools directly on the hose. You press this button here. You can do it. There we go. That's it. So now you can put the tools directly on the hose end. And again, it's all very nice click fitting. So, all you do, you line up that with that. Nice click. And now we've got the tool directly on the end, so you can you know, do your upholstery with it, your stairs. But that is ideal, as I say, in a confined space like your car, when you can't really use the long wand. That's why you have the option of connecting the tool onto the end of the hose. Well, I think that's everything to show you with the machine itself. Let's take it into the kitchen now and we'll see how the Dyson DC25 performs on hard floor cleaning. Okie dokie, pick him a pokey. Now, we've got a lot of muck on this floor. Now, for any of you who've seen my other videos, I've more or less put down what I put down for my vacuum tests. I tend to use the same thing with each different vacuum because then it's easier to make a comparison. I'm not testing them on different things. They're all given the same sort of muck to clear up. In the case of the kitchen floor, it's the usual. We've got flour, rice, couscous, sugar, rolled oats, and normally I have some fruit and fibre or black bran flakes, but uh, I wasn't going to open a new packet just to throw some of it on the floor, so we'll have to forego that. But I put on extra rolled oats to compensate. So this is a sort of mess, you know, if you're having a, a frantic baking session, you might end up with some of this mess on your floor. So we're going to test the Dyson DC25, um, cleaning up a variety of different sized particles. The worst particle to remove off a hard floor using an upright in my opinion is flour. It's the finest particle and it tends to be the one that uh, sometimes gets left by some vacuums. After using this machine on the hard floor when all this dirt is in the bin I'm going to continue to use the cleaner without emptying the bin on the mess we have in the living room because of course Dyson claim no loss of suction so even after picking up these fine particles it should actually clean the carpet in the living room as well. So what I'm going to do is pass the machine back and forth through the middle of this mess just to see the initial um, result and then I'll end up cleaning the rest of this floor because I can't really leave this mess. So here we go. I've got it on hard floor setting with the brush roll off. So let's go. Right, the brush roll engaged slightly just then. If you heard that rumbling noise, that shouldn't have happened. Anyway, as we can see, it's dealt with certainly all the fine particles, and this is a similar result to the Miele S7. It dealt with the smaller particles, no problem, but it did leave behind the large particles. 
In this case, it's the Scottish Rolled Oats. Now, I don't know, it's, they're extra special ones, so I don't know if that makes a difference. Whether smart price or value rolled oats would have been picked up, I'm not sure. But it hasn't picked up first time. Apart from that, you can see it has picked up everything else in, in one sweep. There's a few bits of rice that have that sort of been left, but nothing major. But that is a pretty good result. But because it's not done a full clean sweep, we'll only mark this four out of five. So I'll clean up the rest of this now and then we'll get on into the living room and uh, see if it can tackle the huge pile of mess I've left for it. It's picked everything up, apart from the oats, and I'm quite surprised. I really don't know why it's not worked on this. The S7 didn't cope very well with the oats, but I think really this has done worse than the S7. The S7 did eventually pick the oats up, but for some reason, I mean, it has some has gone into the, t the container. We obviously can see some there, but. It has basically just snow ploughed it. I'll try it just once more for you live and we'll just see. I think the brush roll will turn on. It keeps turning on even when it shouldn't. There we are, I've turned it off now. So we'll just try over this area again and just see if it can pick them up. No, it's not. It's not picked them up. I can't really understand that. Now, I'll just see if this. Then make sure there is suction at the hose, and we'll pick we'll pick these bits up with the hose. So that's that. So I might have to be downgrading this now to three out of five because at least the mealer, which I gave four out of five, did get the oats in the end. The dice and I had to resort to using the hose to remove the rest of them. Still got a few bits which I will clean up, but uh, I think I'll use a cylinder model. Anyway. You can see that it, it had no trouble picking up everything else, it's just the oats. So if you buy a DC25, try not to spill porridge oats everywhere because you might have to resort to a dustpan and brush. Anyway, with the tank partly full, we'll take it over to the living room and hopefully it will do a better job on the living room carpet. Oakley doakley, now then here we have the mess on the carpet. Again, this is 
The sort of mess I put down in each demonstration I do. This mess comprises of, as you can see, dog hair, rice, sugar. Well, everything really that I've put down on the kitchen floor has ended up in here as well. Um, there's also uh, bits of paper. Um, there'll be all sorts. It's basically everything that I've been removing from my carpets using various different vacuum cleaners um, for, for the past few weeks. And I save it all up and spread it all over my carpet. So now we're going to pass the Dyson back and forth right through the middle of this and fingers crossed we will get the performance we should be getting from a machine costing this amount of money and with all the claims Dyson make it didn't do well at all on my kitchen floor. So let's hope the DC25 will redeem itself on my carpets. If not I will be having to go upstairs and getting a Miele or another vacuum cleaner to clean this mess up. But hopefully it won't come to that. So here we go. One pass forwards and one pass back over this mess. isn't that great really. I mean, yes, obviously, you can see where I've been, but if you look, there are quite a few lines that have been left. It's actually <laughs> rolled up a piece of dog hair there. It made it into a nice little sh cigar shape, but it didn't actually get into the machine. I don't normally do this, but I just want to see. I'm going to bring down a vacuum cleaner that I've been using on a regular basis. It's a machine that costs, well, it costs me about a third of what this Dyson costs. And I'm just going to clean another path with that machine and just compare just to see if it does any better. So I'll just pause for a moment and go upstairs and get the other vacuum. Okay, well, this is the machine I've grabbed just to see if it performs any better than the Dyson. I'm going to pass it back and forth over this uncleaned area next to the area that the Dyson cleaned and as you can see the Dyson did leave quite a few bits of muck. I mean this is obviously extreme and you wouldn't have this sort of dirt normally but I have got some machines that have been able to clean this in one well two sweeps but it hasn't left any visible dirt. The Dyson unfortunately has apart from the larger particles if you look closely we can see it quite clearly there You've got the lines where the brushes haven't gone. So mm, it's not very good. But I'm going to see if this Morphe Richards Complete Clean Lift Away Bagless Upright Cleaner does any better. This currently is available. You can pick it up for around £120, £130. It's far less than the recommended retail price, but it's often can be picked up for less than the RRP. This is based on a Shark Navigator Professional in the USA. It's basically the same machine, but it's branded in the UK, Morphe Richards. And I've been really impressed with this. This is a cleaner I tend to grab if I want to do a quick clean up from top to bottom. I like it because it's not too noisy, it's light, um, and it does a good job. And I've been really, really impressed with it. And, and this certainly, if you're looking for a budget priced bagless vacuum cleaner, to me, budget price is anything really under £150, but to other people that might be expensive. But obviously a Dyson cleaner like the DC25 can cost upwards of 300 or more. So this, for a bag of sunlight cleaner, is, in my opinion, cheap. Especially one that claims the never loses suction with constant pickup performance. Anyway, it's smaller than the DC25. It's a bit lighter. I'm just going to pass it same way I did the DC25 next to it and we'll just compare the cleaning performance of the Morphe Richards to the Dyson DC25. Right, so here we go. Just going to pass the Morphe Richards back and forth over the carpet and we'll compare the results. <laughs> Wow. 
Well, that, that has surprised me, to be honest. I knew the Maud Richards was a good machine, but look at that. That is much cleaner. It's not left any visible lines that the Dyson left. I mean, just, this is the path I cleaned. So that's the path cleaned on the right hand side with the Morphe Richards complete clean lift away vacuum. And on the left, same dirt, same bit of carpet. That is the result we got with the Dyson. Now I've not rigged this. I thought the Dyson, I'm surprised to be honest, that the Dyson hasn't performed better than it did. But what I'm going to do is clean up the rest of the mess with the Dyson and then well I'll leave a little bit and we'll just clean up the other half using the Morphe Richards. I wasn't intending on having the Morphe Richards steal the Dyson Thunder. I was going to do a separate video but because the Dyson didn't perform as I expected it to I thought I would try the Morphe Richards which is even better than I expected it to be. I thought it would have struggled but it didn't. It picked it all up. So anyway, look, we'll clean up the rest with the Dyson and then we'll see what else we have to do. Okay, so using the Dyson as you would use it at home, back and forth, side to side, it has cleaned the rest of that up. But it failed on the standard test I give the cleaners, the back, backward and forward pass through the muck. It didn't do very well. But, yes, if you use the machine normally, then it's picked up the dirt. But it didn't pick it up as well as the Morphe Richards. So I've just left a little bit of dirt for the Morphe Richards to cope with. Now it's still, in fact it's quite full now, it's a smaller capacity than the Dyson. Now it's not at the maximum level, but there is, there is quite a bit of dirt in there. So we're going to pick up the rest of this using the Morphe Richards and then it'll be back to the Dyson to see how it fares on the stairs. So there you go, that is fantastic. This really should be a video about the Morphe Richards, but I will do a separate video of this because it is absolutely fantastic. I am so pleased with it, look how full it is. And it was still picking up and it will continue to pick up. That's brilliant. Anyway, this isn't your show, 
you've muscled in on Dyson's glory. So let's test the Dyson now on stair cleaning. Well, I've got the Dyson DC25 positioned at the bottom of the stairs. We're just going to see how far the machine will reach to the top of a standard flight of stairs without too much trouble. So, like I showed you earlier, to access the tools, you lift this cap, pull this red part up all the way, and then give it another tug, and then you can release the hose. Now, we'll put the stair cleaning tool directly on the end of here, and then we'll see if it reaches without having an extension wand on, because I tend to like to clean without because it tends to be, for me, it's a little bit awkward having this tube on. But anyway, we'll position the Dyson. The Dyson is secure at the bottom of the stairs. So we'll go up the stairs. So far, so good. Right, so here we have the Dyson. And it's with the tube on, yes, you could clean nearly at the top. There is another step on this uh, stairwell, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think, I think that's only eleven. Obviously, stairs vary in houses because you might have less stairs than this or more. They could be steeper. This is um, a new built house, so it's a standard staircase, really. Let's just, just double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No. It's only got 10. Well, that's only going to fit up 10 before you have to have, it, have a machine next to you to do the final. Obviously, I can do that step because it's like a half landing. I can do that with the main unit. There's no problem here. But if you have got longer stairs, then you will find you're going to have to carry the Dyson to finish the stairs off. Don't put it at the top of the stairs and clean anything below you. That's dangerous. You could pull the machine down on top of you. And that is not pleasant, I can assure you. Dyson do an extension hose, um, which fits, they do an extension hose for their handheld cleaners, which I know does fit this, it's a smaller diameter than this hose, but that would enable you to get right to the top. They may even do an extension hose that fits this specifically, I'm not sure. You'll have to check Dyson's website for that. But of course it's easy to do when the machine's off. Obviously when the machine's on, the suction is going to start pulling back so it's going to make it slightly less convenient. So we're going to turn the machine on and try it with the suction coming through the hose. Boop, boop. <laughs> I'll go and switch it on at the socket first. Right, yes, it would help if it was plugged in. Right, let's switch on and see if it gets to the top of the stairs with the force of the suction pulling back on the hose. Yeah, so that is possible. It wasn't too bad. But I've used more convenient vacuum cleaners on the stairs. In fact, yes, <laughs> this is becoming a Dyson DC25 versus Morphe Richards Complete Clean video, isn't it? And I didn't intend to do a video of that sort, but <laughs> why not? You've already stolen Dyson Thunder once. So with the Morphe Richards, this actually does come with a turbo brush as well, which I haven't got to hand. But for cleaning the stairs, well, it's light enough, actually. I often use the machine itself. I hold it by the handle here and actually use the machine with the rotating brush bar. But you can actually disconnect the suction unit. You just press this red button once, like that, and then it lifts off. So now... We've got a compact unit that fits on the stairs. You can take the handle off as well, or we can take this off, look. And then this part, which is the handle of the machine, also forms the extension tube. Again, it's a little tricky single-handedly. I'm going to try and press the button. And I do need a third hand, really, for this. 
I use my knee. That's not going to work. Nope. Just pop it down a moment. It's easy, that's it. So now we've taken off the handle. So you can put the turbo, let's say it comes with a turbo brush. So now I can be cleaning my stairs. It will sit on the stairs like that. I can clean the stairs. Or when I've got two hands, it's so light you can carry that suction unit in one hand while you're cleaning the stairs with the other. And as you can see how full that is since it cleaned up all the mess that the Dyson, well the Dyson would have cleaned it up, let's be fair, but not quite as quickly or efficiently. So anyway, that's it Morphe Richards, I think you've had enough limelight. It's time I did a video all of your own. I've done an unboxing video for that a few months ago, but I've not done a thorough test with that machine. So that will follow at some point, but I can tell you now, even if you don't see, you've seen a bit of the performance through this video, it's a fantastic cleaner. They do similar other models as well. There's a red and purple version with a slightly different floor head, equally good. I believe the red version has a slightly shorter flex and it doesn't have a turbo brush. So the purple version probably is the one to go for if you've got pets and you want a longer hose. Not a hose, a longer tube. No, what am I talking about? A longer flex. We all want it longer, don't we? We want a bit, bit more than we get given sometimes. But anyway, now let's put the Dyson back. I'm just going to pop the tools back in. Excuse the angle. And the hose just fits there on this very, very sharp looking piece there, look. So good job that isn't razor sharp because you trip over that you can impale yourself. But anyway, so that's clicked in and then when that's in place you can push that down, push it down further and then the cap goes on. So that's that. Well, there you have it. This review and performance test didn't really turn out exactly the way I expected it to. I mean, out of all the Dyson cleaners I've owned, I think the DC25, as far as the uprights go, is probably the best. I've not tried the latest cleaner, so I can't comment on those. But, you know, it got a witch vest buy, and it scored very well on performance. But in my real-life home tests, it was quite below par. Certainly on the hard floor, it didn't pick up the larger particles. I had to go over with the tube to get the rolled oats. And on the standard test I give all my cleaners on the carpet, you could see that it left a considerable amount. It didn't remove everything in two sweeps. And then along comes the cleaner that I currently use most of the time, the Morphe Richards Lift Away, and it trounced the Dyson. And that really is not what I was expecting at all. I'm honest in my reviews. I thought it would do well because I've used it normally and it seems to do a good job. I've never actually tried the Morphe Richards on, on that sort of test before. It was something, you know, I had a note to do. I'll do that at some point. But even I was surprised at the results of the Morphe Richards. A little bit disappointed with this Dyson. So... I would still, if you desperately need a Dyson, if you want a Dyson, if you have to have a Dyson, and you're not bothered about getting one of the latest ball cleaners, then the DC25 can be picked up, you know, at, a, at reduced prices, and it's probably one worth considering. It did pick up everything, you know, eventually, when I went back, apart from the parts I left, obviously, for the Morphe Richards to clean, it did clean the carpet, but it didn't clean it quite as well in the first initial clean as the Morphe Richards did. When you consider the Morphe Richards costs considerably less than the Dyson, also has some convenience benefits over the Dyson in my opinion, then I would recommend the Morphe Richards as well. So if you have to have a Dyson upright, it's still okay, I'd still recommend it. If you don't, if you're just in the market for a new upright, you have to go bagless, then I would recommend I was going to recommend anyone, anyway, I'm going to do a video separately of the Morphe Richards and I'd already decided that that would be my best buy for a budget bagless upright vacuum cleaner. I've got best buys for more high-end cleaners for Miele and Sebo, ones that I would wholeheartedly recommend, but if you're looking for something a bit cheaper, that Morphe Richards is absolutely fantastic, 100%. I really like that machine. 
But anyway, this was supposed to be about the Dyson. This is a Dyson DC25 multi-floor, still available in the UK and possibly in the USA. Also available in the animal variant with a rotating motor, well, rotating brush, not motorized, but the air-powered rotating turbine brush. And I think you can get it in a, a, a different variation as well with um, a different color cyclone available from independent retailers. But it's basically the machine, it's basically the same whichever variant you go for. Well, I hope you found this video useful. It's been eye-opening for me, I can tell you. I've been quite surprised. But anyway, there it is. That's the Dyson DC25 Multifloor. If you want to see more reviews, check out my other videos. And also subscribe if you want to be notified of any videos I upload, which will include that Morphe Richards, a more in-depth report on the Morphe Richards and there'll be plenty more to come. I've got some other models from Miele, Sebo, um, various other machines that I'm going to do tests for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.